The mayor of Toy Town sat in his study at the town hall, waiting for Ernest the policeman. For it was the custom for Ernest to appear each morning before the mayor in order to report any particular happenings of the night before. On this occasion, he appeared rather later than usual and stood just within the doorway, fumbling with his helmet, his notebook, and a large sheet of paper. He coughed respectfully. <coughs> oh, good morning, officer. Good morning, your worship. I have to report that a very distressing thing has happened. I had a call this morning from Mr. Noor. I see nothing distressing in that. Mr. Noor is one of the oldest inhabitants of Toytown. He may be rather uh, untidy, but so would you be if you had to look after a lot of dirty animals. I don't mean that it was distressing that Mr. Noor called to see me. What I mean is that it was distressing what Mr. Noor called about. Then you should speak more clearly, officer. And what did Mr. Noor want? I have it on this sheet of paper, your worship. A hip, 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 a hip. Hip, stop hip. it. Don't start cheering like that. What is it to cheer about? I wasn't cheering. I was trying to tell you what it was that Mr. Noor wanted. It was a hip, pip, 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 a, pip, a potamus. A hippopotamus. That's it, sir. Well, let's call it a hippo for short, or the morning will have gone before you finished. Now, come, officer. Why did Mr. Noor come to you for a hippo? He's mislaid one, sir. Lost it, as you might say. Then if you told me that at once, we should have saved time. I have here a full description of the animal. It's a baby hippo, sir. And it was wearing a blue and white sweater, knitted for it by Mrs. Noor. Ah, yes. No doubt an animal of that kind would feel the cold. And it seems that this hippo has very curious habits. It likes to lie about in puddles of water. Oh, I hope it removes its sweater first. I didn't ask Mr. Noor that. However... It seems that yesterday, the animal told Mr. Noor that he was going out to look for a nice puddle. And then, he disappeared. Disappeared? Dis yes, Your Worship. He disappeared all of a sudden like. Well, of course, one would hardly expect a hippopotamus to disappear gradually. But proceed, proceed. That's all, sir. The animal has not been seen since. Well, I have an idea. I think this is clearly a case for the radio. The radio? What? That newfangled thing the inventor's playing with? Officer, I must point out that you are not at all respectful. The inventor has promised me that we shall have the radio in Toy Town as they have it elsewhere. And if he fulfills his promise, we shall shortly be able to broadcast a message regarding the young hippo. I don't wish to be disrespectful like your worship, but if that inventor starts messing about with his radio and Mr. Noor's hippo, something dreadful is going to happen. Nonsense, officer, nonsense. Kindly ring for my hat and chain. We'll go at once to the inventor's workshop and see if he can help us. The inventor's workshop was strangely quiet. And not only the workshop itself, but the street in which it stood. For as a rule, there was such an uproar of banging, whistling, hooting and sawing proceeding from the inventor's workshop that the people living around were unable to sleep. Several days earlier, the noise from the workshop had ceased and the neighbours had immediately gone to bed, where they'd remained ever since. The mayor and Ernest quite expected to find the inventor in bed too, but he was not. He was in his workshop, surrounded by rolls and rolls of wire. There was wire everywhere. It lay twisted upon the floor, it hung in loops from the walls and ceiling, and the inventor was so entangled in wire that he looked like a cocoon. He was busily snipping at the wire with a pair of pliers as his visitors entered. Ah, uh, good morning, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, officer. Good, good morning. morning. I good wonder morning. whether you'll be so kind as to help me out of this wire. I seem to have got it a trifle twisted. Uh, may I ask what it is you're inventing? A radio. I beg your pardon? A radio. It's a kind of telephone without wire. The worst of it is one has to have such a lot of wire to make it work. <laughs> what I want to know is... Tut, tut, officer. This is no time for silly questions. I rather gather, Mr. Inventor, that you will be able to broadcast messages very shortly by means of your, ahem, uh, radio. I don't see why not. I'm sure I don't see why not. 
I hope to broadcast music from the town band. Why not messages? Yes, but how are people going to hear them? That's what I want to know. Ah, uh, you won't catch me there, officer. You won't catch me there. I thought of that. When I began to invent radio, it occurred to me immediately that it was no good having radio unless people could hear it. So I arranged with Mr. Peter Brass to open a little shop for the sale of radio gadgets so that people could build their own sets. I've seen that new shop of Brass's. He's got a lot of things in the window, like old coffee tins. Those would be earphones. Maybe. Well, as soon as I saw them, I said to myself, Peter Brass, you're up to no good. And I went into the shop and took his name and address. As a matter of fact, I believe that Brass's shop is quite useful. Most of the young animals of Toy Town have been making themselves receiving sets. Mrs. Goose, the confectioner, has been doing a big trade in old cigar boxes. Very useful thing, cigar boxes, when you're making a radio set. If we've got to wait for people to hear messages on a lot of old toffee tins and cigar boxes, we shall never find Mr. Noah's hippo. It'll be quicker to knock at every door in Toytown and ask if anybody's seen him. Talking of receiving sets, Mr. Mayor, I have here a very novel kind of set which I could let you have for quite a low price. This uh, strange-looking arrangement on wheels looks to me more like a barrel organ. Well, as a matter of fact, I have made it so that one can't use it as a barrel organ if one wants to. You see, if one doesn't like the music broadcast by the radio, one can always get the other music by turning the handle. <laughs> That seems a very good idea, but why is it on wheels? Aha, that's what makes it a very special set. You see, this set is designed to receive two stations, Toy Town and Artville. But if you get tired of the Toy Town program and don't care to turn the handle, you just wheel your set along the road towards Artville. Then, when you get tired of the Artville program, you wheel your set half a mile back, and then you get Toy Town again. It's very useful and convenient. It's what I call a portable set. It certainly seems a good idea, but doesn't it mean a great deal of walking about? Well, of course, you could always harness a donkey to it. In fact, you almost want a donkey to go with the set. Uh, yes, uh, then you would not only hear the music, but have a nice ride at the same time. Excellent. Most ingenious. But to return to this matter of broadcasting messages, when do you think you could manage to send out a message on behalf of the police? Well, Mr. Mayor, I see no reason why I should not broadcast it sometime tonight. I have arranged for the town band to come here this evening to broadcast if I can get it working. And when they have finished, I will broadcast the message with pleasure. Better broadcast the message first. Because when the town band is finished, perhaps people will have stopped listening. True, true, there's something in that. If you will kindly let me have your message, I will broadcast it before the actual entertainment commences. So the mayor and Ernest the policeman composed the message about the missing hippo. And when it was finished, the mayor read it to the inventor. <clears throat> we are asked by Ernest the policeman to broadcast the following message. Missing from his home in the ark near Toy Town, a young hippo answering to the name of Pip. Small brown eyes, complexion greyish, walks with a rolling motion. When last seen was wearing a blue and white striped sweater. Is believed to be looking for a puddle to roll in. Will anyone knowing the whereabouts of the missing animal communicate with Mr. Noah, the Ark, or with the police station, Toy Town? Is that the message? Thank you. Now, if I can only find my spectacles, there will be no difficulty about reading it. My eyes are not so good as they were, and I seem to remember using my glasses to make a magic lantern. Yes, however, no doubt they will turn up, and if they don't, I shall probably be quite able to remember the message. Then we may rely upon you, Mr. Inventor. Absolutely, Mr. Mayor. As soon as I get the radio working, your message will be broadcast. And how will people know you are broadcasting? You can't expect everyone to sit with their ears in cigar boxes waiting, can you? Ah, always trying to catch me, officer. Always trying to catch me. I thought of that. Just before I commence the broadcast, I shall make a hooting sound. In fact, I have invented a special contraption for the purpose of hooting. It is on the roof. If you look up as you go out, you will see it. And as regards that portable set, Mr. Mayor, would you care for me to tie it up and have it sent round to you in time for the first broadcast? Well, <clears throat> I'll think about it. I'll certainly think about it. Good morning to you. <laughs> Thank you.
After leaving the inventor's house, the mayor walked thoughtfully along the street, with Ernest pacing respectfully behind. The mayor was trying to make up his mind whether he should purchase the special radio which the inventor had shown him. It would look most undignified if he contented himself with a set made in a cigar box. But he hesitated, because he knew the mayoress would not understand the importance of the matter. And she would probably say that if he could afford an expensive radio, he could afford a new carpet for the drawing room. However, he at last made up his mind. Officer, I've decided to purchase that very ingenious portable set the inventor showed me. It's clearly my duty as mayor to encourage this new broadcasting. Oh, indeed. Well, you don't catch me with one of them newfangled things. Now, don't say that, officer, because I was about to ask your assistance. You will remember the inventor explained how the appliance worked. One has to wheel it out towards Arkville. Now, it's rather a long way for me to push it alone, so I think you'd better come with me. Oh, very well, sir. If you don't think it looked too undignified, as you might say, for us to trundle a thing like a barrel organ backwards and forwards on the crossroads, I suppose I must come. But there's one thing, Your Worship, I must insist upon, with all due respect. You don't catch me turning no handle. I don't want all the young animals at Toy Town dropping pennies on the pavement whenever I come onto my beat. You shall not be asked to turn the handle, officer, I promise you. Immediately after tea, we'll go back to the inventors and procure the apparatus, which we will wheel through the back streets to the open country. Who knows? We might see Mr. Noah's young hippo on the way. So early that evening, the mayor, accompanied by Ernest, could have been seen trundling the portable radio along the back ways of Toy Town. And when they reached the Arkville Road, Ernest blew a sigh of relief, removed his helmet, and wiped his forehead with a large, spotted handkerchief. Then they resumed their journey, taking turns to push the radio. And at last they passed the pond where the celluloid ducks lived and arrived at the crossroads. Now, according to the inventor's instructions, we have to turn this little knob. So, ahem, I, uh, I don't seem to hear anything, do you? No, Your Worship, I don't hear nothing. Uh, perhaps that's because we are not in the right position. Let's try wheeling the appliance a little nearer to Arkville. I still can hear nothing. I can see a lot of little nubs, Your Worship. How about turning them all round? An excellent idea. Let's turn every knob we can see. Something's bound to happen then. Ah, this one's come right off. Came right off in my hand, it did. Really, you must be careful, officer. How can you expect the thing to work if you start pulling it to pieces? I still can't hear anything, can you? Perhaps something is stuck. I, I wonder whether we could uh, shake it. Oh, it's a bit heavy to shake, Your Worship. But you take one end and I'll take the other. Now then... Both together. Ah, no good. I suppose you haven't such a thing as a hammer about you. No, Your Worship, I ain't. But I got on a good heavy pair of boots. It's no good kicking the thing, officer. Don't be impatient. Let's try turning the handle. Uh, it's a swindle, Your Worship. That's what it is. Call that a radio set? Why, I could make a better one than that. It certainly seems a trifle disappointing. However, let's try wheeling it further back towards Toy Town. It's working! It's working! I knew it would be all right! But is that all it's going to do, Your Worship? Because it don't seem to me worth all the trouble if that's all we're going to hear. Don't be impatient, officer. Don't be impatient. Listen. Before we start the evening's program, here is an SOS. We are asked by Mr. Noah to broadcast the following message. Missing from his home in the Ark near Toy Town, Ernest the Policeman. Small brown eyes, complexion greyish, walks with a rolling motion. Answers to the name of Pip. Is thought to be looking for a puddle to roll in. 
when last seen was wearing a blue and white striped sweater. Will anyone knowing the whereabouts of the missing animal uh, communicate with Mr. Noah, the Ark, or with the police station at Toy Town? Oh, I knew it. I knew that if that inventor fellow had anything to do with the message, something would happen. Now what am I going to do? Me rolling in puddles. Whatever will people think? Oh, this is most distressing. Evidently, the inventor was unable to find his spectacles. Come on. I ain't going to stop here. Let's get back to Toy Town and, and do something. <sighs> Where are we going? I can't see. I don't quite see no either. Ow! Oh, stand up, man. You are dragging me into the pond as well. Oh! Oh, what are those white things for the blobbing about? The, 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 the duck, the celluloid duck, your worship. Among the many listeners in Toy Town that evening were Dennis the Dash Hound and Larry the Lamb. They sat in Farmer Giles' barn, sharing a pair of Peter Brass's earphones. When they heard the message about Ernest the policeman, they laid down the earphones and looked at each other in dismay. Ah, Larry, my friend, did you hear? Ernest, our so noble policeman, lost his. What to him cannot happen? And I, that he lived at the Ark, did not know about it. Oh, Dennis, perhaps Mr. Noah's taking lodgers. Mr. Ernest would be a very useful lodger to have because he could prevent those rough animals from throwing mud at the train when it goes by. But that he in a puddle to roll should wish, all this so dignified he was, was it not? You never can tell. I knew a most respectable rabbit who simply loved to make mud pies, but you never believed it to look at him. Of course, my friend Ernest the policeman always so funny was. But that greyish he was, I do not remember. Rather red he was, no? He looked greyish after he found his paddle. I know, because I fell in one once when I was a very little lamb. And the message said he was wearing a blue and white striped sweater. What is a sweater? That must be the thing he wears on his arm, that stripey thing. And I expect that Pip is his pet name, what the mayor calls him. Let us out go and see if we find him can. <laughs> The two animals ran out into the street where there was much excitement, or the surprise was intense when it became known that the policeman was missing. A large crowd collected in front of the town hall. And there, that very disagreeable old gentleman, Mr. Grouser, began to tell everyone what he thought of the affair. It's disgraceful. Suppose a crime was being committed and the policeman had gone off to roll in puddles. He ought to be ashamed of himself. It would not be so bad if he simply paddled, but rolling in puddles. I never heard of such a thing. It's disgraceful. We shall have to go back, Dennis. Ernest, our policeman in the streets of Toy Town, not to be found, was. Shall we to Arkville go? But, Dennis, we're on the road to Arkville already. Ah, the night so dark is, I see nothing can. Listen. The pond, where lives the ducks of celluloid made. Run, Dennis, run. I a helmet and a cocked hat can see. Bah, it's Mr. Mayor's hat. Up here I will that they don't drown to see. Larry, my friend, to Toy Town, run back, help to obtain. Help! Help! We found him! He's in the pond where the celluloid ducks live. He's stuck in the mud, and the mare as well. They can't get out. And Ernest is making a funny gurgling noise. He's enjoying himself. That's what he's doing. I never heard of such a thing. It ought not to be allowed. Lead us to the place. It's disgraceful. 
You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Uncle Fern. You too, sir. You, the mayor of Toy Town, set an example like this. It's disgraceful. That's what it is. <coughs> disgraceful. Both Ernest and the mayor were too cold and uncomfortable to reply. They were dragged from the pond and hurried off home as fast as their legs could take them. As the policeman and the mayor dashed along, escorted by Larry and Dennis, they heard from behind them the distant voice of Mr. Grouser. Disgraceful! Disgraceful! Sitting in a muddy pond playing a barrel organ. I never heard of such a thing. They ought not to be allowed. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> Ernest and the mayor were put to bed with hot water bottles, and fortunately neither of them caught cold, and so everything ended fairly well. The mayor spoke very sternly to the inventor, who explained carefully how it was the mistake had occurred. And as the missing hippo was discovered in Mr. Grouse's bath, where it had gone because it could find no puddle in the streets, Mr. Noah was quite satisfied. But it was a long time before Ernest could forget the affair, and even now, no one can mention the name of Pip in the hearing of the policeman, without the risk of having his name and address taken.